Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. We have been breaking down the Lord's Prayer into seven shorter uh, just takeaways from this passage of Scripture. It's a pretty famous passage of Scripture that Jesus quoted in Matthew chapter 6, also in Luke chapter 11. Uh, but maybe you heard about it watching your favorite football movie or you grew up playing sports and you recited it out loud. It's a pretty famous passage of Scripture. But we're pulling out seven different takeaways and applying. This is number four. Uh, so want to encourage you take some time go back watch number one two and three uh, because number four will really make a little bit more sense if you've previously watched uh, those other videos all right everybody we're going to dive in today with the lord's prayer in matthew chapter 6 verses 9 through 12 let's read when you pray pray like this our father in heaven may your name be kept holy may your kingdom come soon may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, we've been talking about some versions and that passage of scripture with for yours is the kingdom and the glory and the power forever. That's going to be important to know because that's going to be number seven of our takeaways out of this passage of scripture. But we're on number four. And number four is this. Give us today the food that we need. Maybe you've heard another translation says, give us today our daily bread. What does that mean? Does that literally mean we're asking God to poof, put some Taco Bell on our table, poof, put that Big Mac, come on, that big loaf of bread, that spaghetti, whatever your thing is, not necessarily, but yes, what we're asking God right here is to be our provider. See, we've we've asked and recognized God as our father and had that relationship. We've praised him and worshiped him and spent some time bringing glory to his name. We've gotten ourselves in line with his kingdom and his agenda. And now we're ready to begin asking all the things uh, that we need to see that we're believing for in our lives. It could be we're believing for a health situation to come through. Maybe uh, you don't know where how the bills are going to get paid this next month and you're believing for a financial breakthrough. This is the time where we can dig in and ask God uh, for what we need and what our heart desires, what we're believing for. He does want to hear our needs. He does want to hear our desires. And that's why this is in the prayer. In fact, it's right in the middle of the prayer. And I think it's it's placed right after let your kingdom come and your will be done intentionally because when we align ourselves, when we align our heart, when we align our minds with God's word and his purpose and his kingdom, then we're at a place where whatever we're asking for, it has great intentions. Whatever we're asking for is not about me. It's not selfish. It's about kingdom. It's about advancing the mission. It's about glorifying God. See, God's not a genie. We, don't, we can't just be like, God, I want a million dollars because I want a brand new Lambo, new house. I want to get a boat. I want to be able to travel the world. So God, please let me win the lottery. That is not how it works. But if our heart is pure, our heart is, is aligned with his purpose and his mission, we can ask God, I need more finances. God, I'm asking for an overflow in my bank account. God, I'm asking for an increase, uh, a pay increase at my job. God, I'm asking for that, that sale to go through. God, I'm asking for these things because my heart is aligned with your purpose and I want to be able to be free uh, from debt. I want to be able to give generously and bless people and advance your kingdom and show people the love and the hope that is found in you. And so we can ask, give us today the food we need. See, in this, we're acknowledging that it's God alone that can sustain us. It's God alone that's our provider, uh, that we're dependent on him. We're coming to him and say, God, our dependency is not in our job. It's not in our talents. It's not in our ability. It's not in our influence. It's not in our relationships. Our dependence and our success comes from you. We're depending on you, our provider. And that's what this, uh, this point is all about. He wants to meet our needs. In fact, Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says it like this. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. Then you'll experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Don't worry. 
Don't worry, he says. Come on, how many of you guys, I know me, I worry sometimes. I'm concerned uh, about this situation. I'm concerned when we're having relational struggles. I'm worried uh, when there's a financial thing that pops up that we weren't counting on. I'm concerned, I'm worried. And sometimes it can lead to anxiety and fear and, and just frustration. And God is saying, listen, don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. Tell God what you need. And then thank him. I love it. It says, and then thank him for what he's already done. So you're coming, you're practicing uh, what we talked about in the first first and second uh, breakdown of this is that we're, we're lifting up the name of Jesus. We're thanking him for who he is and all that he's provided. And then we're asking him, but then it's attached with a promise. It says, then you will experience God's perfect peace. It passes all understanding. I don't know about you, but I need the peace of God when there's in the, when I'm in the middle of a storm, when I'm in the middle of, of a storm and don't know how I'm going to come through the other side. I need the peace that passes understanding. And so God is saying, if we pray, when we pray, come to him, ask what we need and acknowledge him as our provider, as our supplier, as everything, as the only answer that we need in order for those things to be fulfilled. God knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you need. So why does he have us ask? I believe it's because it shows where our heart's at. It shows where our mind's at. Are we going to trust him as our provider? Or are we going to try to just nudge and fight and squirm and work our way out of this situation? Now, listen, it's important to work hard. We need to be a good steward of our time, a good steward of our resources. But God, we can trust God. And so he's testing us. This is a test. Are they going to trust me, acknowledge me and come to me? Philippians 419 echoes that Paul says, I am convinced. Come on. Paul was convinced that my God will fully satisfy every need that you have. Why? Because I have seen the abundant riches of the glory revealed to me through Christ Jesus. Paul is saying, listen, he did it for me. He can do it for you. Come on out there. If he did it for you, he can do it for me. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. That's why it's important that we're in community because we can share. Man, this is what God did for me. And I'm going to pray with you and believe that God is going to meet your riches. God is going to meet your need. Everything that you are asking for, he is going to supply it if our hearts are aligned with his will and his purpose. Hey, that's point number four as we're breaking down seven takeaways to pray the way that Jesus prayed from the Lord's prayer in Matthew chapter six. I just want to pray for you as we close our time today. God, we just thank you for your son, for your daughter, wherever they're watching from, God, I pray that you would protect them, uh, that you would bless them, that you would keep them healthy and strong. God, they uh, just be their provider. God, you know exactly what they need. Help them not to ask in pride or in selfishness, but to humbly and boldly come before you and ask what they need. God, and I thank you as they do that, you're gonna meet all their needs according to your riches and for your glory. God, we thank you for that. We love you in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hey, that's a quick model of how you can do that for yourself or for others. All right, everybody, until next time, have a good one.